If you remember a few months back, I did a video about how to create a wildflower meadow. I'm just gonna show you the update of how it looks right now. For people who are actually interested in creating one, I hadn't really seen much in the way of intermediate account of the journey of going through establishing a wildflower meadow and some of my rationalizations and the way that I've attempted to solve some of the problems might be useful to you if you're thinking of doing the same. So let's go have a look. We got lots of dandelions in there, pretty good. All the poppies seem to have germinated in exactly the same place, so I might move those around. I've not done a brilliant job of getting rid of this perennial ryegrass. There's a fair bit of wild garlic in there, bluebells, some cowslips going over a bit now, and convalaria. I haven't seen any germination of yellow rattle. And you can see where, where I've left the edge of the paths, which are normal grass, that I expect to creep back in, unless I can get some yellow rattle to establish. <sighs> Let's have a seat. So some of the trouble has come as a result of it being dry. We've had hardly any rain in April. I probably urinated more in the whole month than the entire rainfall for the UK, which is about accurate. I think we've had all the water butts in the garden are completely empty. Also, I wouldn't have expected a great deal of germination. It's until it looks established and people know what they're looking at and that there feels like there's a purpose to it, it's likely that you're gonna have some trouble because people don't know what it is. It just looks muddy. Uh, that's why I'm trying to share this part of the experience because if you're attempting to do it perhaps you might go through exactly the same situation where you're unsure of that painful period of establishment as to whether it's worth doing and whether you should persevere and is it normal. I haven't created them in my own garden before they've always been in open spaces where it's a bit more relaxed you don't have the same ownership over it. You can't make those quick decisions that will sometimes hinder your progress in something. But what's been really, really nice in the garden is since I've been adopting a more wildlife friendly approach, I've noticed a huge amount of insects coming into the garden because I've not been weeding so meticulously. I've let things like dandelions establish and not worry about them too much. And things are starting to take the shape that I want them to. So I've seen so many different types of hoverflies and uh, you know, perhaps I'm a little bit weird for getting so excited by it, but there are some, I've spoken about this before, there's such a rapid decline in insect populations to the point that it's an emergency uh, and we should be a little bit more worried about it. And this is just one way of taking some sort of positive action against the tide of insect decline. Anyway, if you're just doing it for horticultural purposes and for prettiness, I know it looks a little bit rough at this stage, but it will get better. Definitely let me know in the comments if you're gonna give this a try, and I'd be open to any questions if there's anything that you might wanna know from my experience of